Does Sambo really suck like Shell Sonnen says it does? If you want to find out my opinion about it, stay tuned and watch this short video. If you want to master MMA fundamentals, check out my instructional called MMA Essential Lessons. In it you can learn about clinch takedowns, boxing, grappling, Muay Thai, ground and pound, Thai and puppet master clinch, escapes from inferior positions and shooting takedowns. Check out the link in the description below. Hi, my name is Mark Leichner from MMACoach.net where we teach coaches, fighters and enthusiasts how to train smart and not just hard. And in today's video I'll be addressing what Chael Sonnen said about Sambo. And he said that it sucks. So, does it really suck? Well, first of all, uh, I love Chael Sonnen's channel and he has a ton of great content which I suggest you check out. But I don't really agree with, the, with him on this one. And second of all, I, uh, I'm not even sure that he means what he says because, you know, he used to say a lot of crazy things when he competed, uh, you know, in order to sell his fights. So I'm not sure if he's doing the same thing right now uh, in order to get views on his channel. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, it was fun watching him and listening to him. So does it really suck? The short answer is no, it does not suck. I do think that wrestling, especially freestyle wrestling and folk style wrestling, is better for MMA than Judo or Sambo. And why am I mentioning Judo here? Uh, I'm mentioning it because uh, Judo and Sambo are very similar. Now, uh, he, he mentioned that there are not a lot of Sambo players in the UFC and I will address that later. Uh, I will first address why I don't think Sambo sucks and what is Sambo's uh, influence in MMA. The best fighter of all times, Fyodor Emelianenko, was a Sambo player and a Judo player as well. Judo and Sambo are wrestling, jacket wrestling. So it's, you, you, can, you can call it Sambo and Judo, but in its essence it's wrestling. Uh, it's wrestling with the jacket, with clothes on. Now there are significant differences with, uh, when you wrestle with the gi and without the gi, but also there is a lot of overlap. A lot of overlap. So a lot of techniques exist both in wrestling and in judo and sambo. The same techniques like uchimata, foot sweeps, uh, suplexes and whatnot. So it's a type of wrestling and you cannot really uh, you know, deny the effectiveness of sambo because in the street, and I'm not, I know I'm, we're not talking about the street, we're talking about MMA, but still in the street it's, I think it's even more applicable because in the street you're not walking half naked, you're walking with your clothes on. As far as MMA is concerned, uh, Sambo has had an influence in MMA, especially with leg locks and arm bars. Arm bars, you say? Uh, what do you mean? Don't they come from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Yes and no. Let me explain. Uh, one of the best exponents of the arm bar ever was Ronda Rousey. Uh, and you might say what you will about Ronda Rousey, she's washed out, she will never fight again and whatnot. But there's no denying to me that uh, she has one of the best, if not the best armbar in all of MMA, including men. And I'm not the first one to say that. She learned the armbar from her mother and the armbar made its way to Judo by way of Sambo. And what do I mean? Armbars existed in Judo even before Sambo, but it was the Sambo players that came into Judo that really made them effective and made them popular in Judo. In the 60s, when Judo became an Olympic sport, uh, Soviet Union started uh, paying more attention to Judo and Sambo players started competing in Judo because Sambo, as I said, Sambo and Judo are very, very similar. They, they started competing in Judo and uh, they brought their own techniques, their own uh, ways to prepare the armbar and they started uh, armbarring everybody, almost everybody. A British world champion from uh, 1981, Neil Adams, was one of the best guys ever in judo to do an armbar, and he learned it from a Soviet guy. So this is how the armbar got its way, the, the straight armbar, Juji Gatame, this is how it made its way to judo. Even though it existed in judo, Sambo players made it better, uh, they, they had setups that were better, and uh, they made it more effective. And from then on, many judo players caught on and started doing the same setups, the same armbar. And the one setup that uh, Eddie Bravo calls the swim move, it came from judo. And before that, it came from sambo. So some of the ways to set up the armbar came from sambo. And you should know that sambo is a, is a hybrid art that uh, consists of many different wrestling, local wrestling styles in the Soviet Union, but also from judo. Uh, one of its founders was uh, a judo black belt and was living in Japan and training in Kodokan. 
But uh, even though they say that the, the influence uh, for Sambo were many, many uh, local styles, I think the biggest influence uh, for Sambo was Judo, actually. Another thing that uh, Sambo brought to MMA was the leg locks. To be more precise, Sambo is the art that is probably most responsible for bringing leg locks to MMA and BJJ, but that is not 100% certain. At least I don't know, because catch wrestling might be another source of leg locks. What I do know is that Judo did have leg locks in its system, but they were banned at some point and Sambo probably took leg locks from Judo and refined them. Now, are Sambo players the best leg lockers today? No, I don't think so. I think BJJers are, and most specifically the guys that train with John Danaher and a few others as well. Uh, they made leg locks better. They took what's good in Sambo, they made it better because uh, uh, BJJ is an open source system, just like MMA is. They take everything from other arts and make it better because they are not so constrained by the rule sets. You know, in Judo, in Sambo, in wrestling, you have specific rule sets that uh, only favor certain, certain techniques. And those techniques get really good. But BJJ has the most relaxed rule set of all of grappling sports. Also, MMA has almost, you know, they, they used to, to, to advertise it as no rules fighting. Of course, it has a lot of rules, but is, it's, as they say, as real as it gets. So leg locks made their way from Sambo and BJJ guys made it better. So that's another influence from Sambo. And uh, Chael Sonnen sometimes uh, criticizes other sports like boxing and kickboxing for uh, not being uh, really serious sports because they're not in the Olympics. And I can somewhat agree with that because, uh, yes, the sports that are in the Olympics, the countries spend more money for those sports. The, the Olympic program is more serious than uh, some program for uh, sports that are not in the Olympic Games. But I disagree, of course, kickboxing and boxing are really good sports and, you know, very applicable to MMA as well. Sambo might not be in the Olympics like wrestling and judo is, but uh, it's still practiced by, um, by many countries. And just take former Soviet Uni Union, for example. You know how big that country was? You know how, how many people there were there? How many people practiced Sambo? So that's a lot of people practicing something that's very, very good. And of course, we have combat Sambo, which is, uh, uh, is kind of like MMA, only with the gi. Of course, rules are a little bit different, and it's very, very useful. Now, Chael Sonnen also said that uh, just because uh, the Russian army is practicing it doesn't mean that it, it's a good art. Of course, there are armies that are practicing uh, very bad arts. For example, here in Serbia, we have, uh, we have something called the real Aikido that's practiced in the armies. It, it, it's a totally nonsense art. Like, you know, my, um, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know my position on Aikido. So uh, yeah, that can be the case in some countries, but uh, in this case, in Sambo's case, it's a very useful art, both combat Sambo and the regular Sambo. So the point is that I don't agree with Chael, and I think Sambo is a very good art. And as far as uh, uh, why Sambo players are not more prominent in the UFC is concerned, there may be many reasons. I cannot answer this question for sure. But a lot of wrestlers come to the UFC because the UFC uh, originated in America and most fights are organized in America. And uh, wrestling is really big in the US, so those guys have a, a, like a natural, it's like a natural progression for them after college or after they finish their careers to go into the UFC. Uh, Russia is, is far away and uh, some Russians have gotten into the UFC, but uh, that might be one of the reasons, you know, it's not so easy to get to the UFC if you're not from the US or Brazil. So uh, yeah, it, it can be a little bit tougher. And I will repeat it again. I think wrestling is better for, uh, for MMA than judo or sambo, because when you're a judo guy or a sambo guy, you have to learn how to tie up the opponent using overhooks, underhooks, you know, no gi stuff. Uh, when you're a wrestler, uh, you don't have to learn that. You already know how to, to hold the opponent and throw the opponent down without the use of a gi. So that, in that regard, I think wrestling has an upper hand. And here's a fun fact. Did you know that wrestlers, judo guys and sambo guys train together from time to time in Russia? Uh, they, of course, train with their own clubs and, you know, they, their own art. But from time to time, they gather and they train. Let's say they all go to, do, to a judo training or, or they all go to a wrestling training or to a sambo training. So they, they, they have a, a, a well-rounded grappling experience there. 
Many MMA champions use ground and pound as their go-to strategy. If you want to learn how to do it properly, check out my total ground and pound blueprint instructional. The link is in the description. Is Trail Sonnen right? What do you think? Does Sambo really suck or not? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, like it and share it. And you can also subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like a more in-depth MMA training, check out my instructionals. My name is Mark Leichner from MMACoach.net and I will see you again very soon.